Hi there. In this video, I will introduce you to the NLU course map. If you haven't used this document before, don't worry. By the end of this video, you should have a good idea about what the course map is, what it's used for, and how to go about filling it out. So let's go ahead and get started here. First of all, what is the course map? The course map is a single document which demonstrates sequence and alignment between learning outcomes, learning materials, activities, and assessments. The course map helps all project stakeholders to work collaboratively on a course development project. The careful planning that goes into a course map helps to speed up the process of developing all of the learning materials, activities, assessments, etc. later on. And finally, it's important to understand that the course map is typically completed before any student-facing materials are created for a course. And the course map will commonly undergo several revisions based on feedback from all of the project stakeholders before it's considered to be finalized. So with all of that in mind, I want to focus in on this keyword alignment here that I mentioned in the first point. The NLU course map is built basically from the ground up to demonstrate alignment or the connection between all of the different components in a course. And I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here when we say alignment in a course. So the concept of alignment actually has three components that you should keep in mind when you're planning the content for your course. So first, everything a student is expected to learn and the skills they are expected to acquire are determined by specific and measurable learning outcomes, which clearly define what students should be able to do as a result of their learning. Two, all learning activities and all means of assessments must relate directly to the stated learning outcomes. And three, all resources, materials, and technologies used in the course should support achievement of the stated learning outcomes. So with all that in mind and without further ado, I'd like to show you how this all actually fits together on the course map template. So we'll take a look at that right now. Here we have the NLU course map. Now, your version of the course map might look a little bit different than mine. There are a few different versions out there, but your version should include all of the same sections, or mostly the same sections that my version here includes. So we're going to start at the top and we'll just work our way down. So right up first we have a section of instructions. We're going to go ahead and skip the instructions section for now because that's the purpose of this video. Um, so we'll scroll down and we see a spot to include our course name. So you can just type in the name of your course right here. Below that, we have a table where you can list out all of your program level outcomes. Now, your program level outcomes are probably given to you on the university course outline or the master's syllabus for your course. So if you have those documents or either of those documents, you can probably copy and paste the program level outcomes directly into this table here. If they're not listed on those documents and if you don't know what the program level outcomes are, you should contact your program chair for more information. So go ahead and just fill out that table and then scroll down. The next section down here is for course level outcomes. Like your program level outcomes, these are probably included and given to you on your university course outline or master course syllabus. So again, you can probably just copy and paste them right here into this table. After you do that though, you're going to need to do some work. So after copy and pasting all of the course level outcomes here, I want to make sure that all of the course level outcomes align or are related to at least one of my program level outcomes. So I wrote in one objective here as an example and basically what I'm saying here is that this objective will help students meet program level objectives one and two. So this objective right here will support these two program level objectives. And so you'll want to align or show the connection between all of your course level outcomes and your program level outcomes. Um, after you fill in this whole table for your entire course, you're going to want to make sure that each of the program level outcomes is addressed at least once. After doing that, we'll go over here to the modules section. You've probably noticed this one already. Um, and actually, we're going to skip this column for now because we can't fill it out quite yet, but we'll have to come back here later. 
So up next we'll go ahead and scroll down and you'll notice a section for you to list your required texts or materials. So the idea here is that if you have any required texts, you should just list them here in APA format. Um, you can also use whatever citation method that you'll want your students to cite in. Then provide some additional information about the text, including the ISBN, a link to the publisher's webpage, if any, um, the publisher's list price, as well as any additional notes that might be important. As you can see here, there's, spot, there, there's space for two required textbooks. Um, after you're done with that, go ahead and scroll down, and finally, we reach the section uh, or the module outline section. And in this section, you're going to go ahead and plan out your entire course module by module. Now, what a module, the definition of a module can differ depending on different courses and different programs, but generally speaking, a module refers to one week of content. So, for example, if you had an 11 week course, you might have 11 modules. Keep in mind, you know, sometimes, especially during summer, um, some courses will do two modules per week, so we like to refer to them as modules rather than weeks. Um, so the idea here is that we have one big long table with space for you to plan each of your modules, but we'll go ahead and focus in on module one for now, because I want to show you what a completed module might end up looking like, and the process for filling this out. Um, so what we have here at the very top is a space for a title. So you want to give your module a descriptive title. Um, it should be short, but it should basically tell students what they're going to learn in that module. So in my module here, students are going to learn about flipped learning. Short and sweet. Below that, we have a space for you to write an introduction to your module. Um, you, don't, you don't need to be incredibly detailed here, but I think it might be good for you to include a paragraph or two um, just highlighting the, the key points, telling students what they're going to learn, what to look out for, um, basically introduce them to what they're going to learn in the module. After that, you'll want to come right down here and you'll want to fill in your module level objectives. So unlike the program level objectives and the course level objectives, these module level objectives will probably be up to you to write. And so remember, the module level objectives should basically say or tell students what you want them to be able to do after completing your module. What's the skill or the knowledge that they're going to have as a result of their learning in this module? So go ahead and write out all of your module level objectives first before completing anything over here. So just an example here, what I have is um, my module level objectives. So it says, after completing this module, the student will be able to recall the definition of blended and flipped learning presented in the module one content. After completing this module, the student will be able to describe several practical benefits of flipped learning. And finally, I have a third objective here. After completing this module, the student will be able to outline a flipped learning lesson agenda integrating online and face-to-face -face components. So those are my three module level objectives. So after I write those out, I want to make sure that each of my module level objectives is aligned with or supports at least one of the course level objectives. So I've listed out the course level objective here that this module level objective supports. So by being able to recall the definition of blended and flipped learning, they're going to be better prepared to succeed with my course level objective number one which I've listed up here. So I've written my module level objectives and now I've aligned all of my module level objectives with at least one course level objective. Um, the next thing that I like to do is I like to skip over here to the activities and assessments column and now in this column column, I'm going to identify all of the different activities and the different assessments that I'm going to include in my class that will help support my students' ability to meet my module level objectives. So for example here, remember my, my first module level objective here was for them to recall the definition of blended and flipped learning. So because they're recalling information, I think a good assessment for that or a good activity might be a quiz where I ask them to recall the definitions of blended and flipped learning. Um, right here, I ask them to describe several 
se uh, describe several practical benefits of flipped learning. And so because they're describing something now, I might want to give them an online discussion, or in this case, I've given them an in-class discussion where they're going to develop flash talks on flipped learning. And finally down here, you know, I want them to outline a flipped learning lesson agenda integrating online and face to face to components. So I'm going to give them maybe a Dropbox assignment where they outline agenda and then submit it via the Dropbox. So these are going to be the activities or the assessments that are included within this module. So in this first week of content here, or in this first module, they have a quiz, they have a discussion, and they have assignment that are going to be due for grading. Um, and then finally, I like to go into this learning content column here. And in the learning content column, I'm going to identify all of the different resources that my students are going to interact with um, in order for them to be able to learn how to complete or learn how to achieve all of my objectives. So my first objective here was for them to recall the definition of blended and flipped learning. So I want to tell them what the definition is, right? So what I'm going to have them do is I'm going to have them read some content that I'm going to develop for them in D2L. I'm going to have them watch a video about you know what flipped learning is. And I'm going to have them read some more from their textbook, chapter two, which might be about flipped learning. So my students will come into my module. They'll understand basically what they're going to learn, what they what what they're going to learn in the module. They're going to interact with all of my materials here, and then they're going to complete the quiz. So that concludes my module one. Now I'll scroll down to module two, and I'll complete that process again for module two, three, four, five, etc. Um, Real quickly, notice here that in my activities and assessments column, I'm not really providing too much detail about this specific uh, assignment here. So just in this table here, there's not enough room for me to include specific assignment instructions or a description of the assignment. So what I've done here is I've just listed the title of my assignment. And then if we scroll down here, at the very bottom of the page, we have one more additional section and that's for detailed activity and assessment instructions. So remember I listed my activity in module one, so here I have the detailed instructions for that assignment. And I would highly recommend that you identify in some way which module each of your assignments is in. So remember my flipped learning flash talks discussion was in module one, so I just said M1 discussion. If it was in module two, I would say M2 discussion, etc. So one final thing that we need to do on this course map is we need to fill out that section that we skipped earlier. That's this section right here for modules. So basically what we want to do in this column is show that every one of our course level objectives here is addressed in at least one module. So right here I have my first course level objective and I know because I aligned it down here that that course level objective is addressed in module one. In fact, it's addressed three times. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scroll up and I plug in the number one here to signify that course level objective is addressed in module number one. And so you'll want to do that for the rest of the course level objectives. And in the end, all of your course level objectives should be addressed in at least one module. And so that is how to go about filling out the course map. So I really do hope this video was informative for you and I want to thank you for watching.